finally, um, the time has arrived. It is your time, and you've got an entire hour dedicated just to you. I know you've been watching grade 10 and 11 because you're just dedicated like that. That's what mindsets is doing. But it's also revision, hey? Yeah, and that totally. the grounding that they're supposed to have anyway. And it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, knowing what I love about life sciences is that it's about us. It's about everything that's around us. And I think I really do, even though I didn't do it in school, Kathy, don't shout at me. I she's really, learning. I'm loving okay. it. She is learning. I'm loving and I'll it. tell you what, she's one of the best students I've ever had. But then I taught boys always. Oh, you see. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, Kathy, what are, we what are we chatting to the grade 12s about today? Well, we're going to be looking at RNA and the types of RNA. Then we're going to go through what all of you keep asking for is protein synthesis. And I promise you now that you will never, ever not get full marks Unless you really are, make silly errors, you will only ever get full marks for protein synthesis questions. I promise. It is so easy. And everybody, Indiana, makes such a big show of it um, when it is the simplest thing on the planet. Yeah. Right. So, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break so we can get straight to it. Please chat to me. I know you're going to because you guys, the matrix, the matrix are on it. They're on Twitter. They're on yeah. Facebook. They've had more practice. They're eh? jiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> guys, get to facebook.com forward slash learn extra. That's X-T-R-A. Also chat to me on Twitter at learn extra, X-T-R-A. And we'll get chatting straight after the break. Grade 12s, welcome back, and gosh, are we excited for a good lesson. We've got a little bit of a surprise, a little experiment kind of thing that we're going to do later that hopefully you will enjoy if we get it to work. Very mm. exciting. Um, I think, Kathy, we should get straight to it and then, yeah, see what happens after the break. So don't you leave, guys. Don't you leave. Don't forget to join us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, before we start anything, Grade 12s, you have to just... Give me a little bit of grace here, and I'm sure Indiana will as well. I have the most sweetest, poppet, darling, best child in this entire world who told me that she was watching today. And she is just beautiful, little Ashton. Um, and let me tell you something now. This, this little girl goes and she looks after anything and everything she finds. She's a biologist after my own heart. She's Sweet. just the most angel child in the world. Ashton, my baby. Mwah. All right. Hello, Ashton. I want to say hello as well. <laughs> yeah, she, she is <laughs> just too divine for words. <laughs> She's going to probably shock us all one day and find a cure for AIDS I or something so. like that. I hope so. She's just that kind of kid. Yeah, all right, here we go. Types of RNA. All right, people. Now, if you recall that we went through the whole process last week when I said to you that you have your uh, nucleotides. The nucleotides are made up of a phosphate, a pento sugar, which makes up your spine or, or the, the backbone of your, of your DNA or RNA. And you have your nitrogenous base that attaches to the pento sugar. Now, the pento sugar will be different for DNA because it will be deoxyribose uh, sugar. And for RNA, it will be a ribose sugar. So DNA, deoxyribose, or RNA, a ribose sugar. With your, with your DNA, you're going to have a double strand which bonds together between the, two uh, between the two nitrogenous bases from either side, okay, with a weak hydrogen bond. That's just to do a bit of a, 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 a backup. But remember that those nitrogenous bases are complementary bases. And we have the purines and the pyrimidines. The pyrimidines have a Y in them, so cytosine with a Y and thymine with a Y are your pyrimidines and your purines are adenosine uh, 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 and guanine. All right, so you've got A and G as purines and your cytosine and thymine, so your C and your T are your pyrimidines. That's if we have DNA. If we have RNA, your purines stay the same, but your pyrimidines You've got cytosine and uracil. 
uracil replaces the thymine. And it's got a U in it. And a U is just a Y without a tail. So your Ys and your Us are your pyrimidines. And on the other side, you have your purines. I told you always to write A to T and G to C. Because those are your complementary combinations. All right, now, your types of RNA, there are three. All right? Number one. Okay? First one is going to be, and I'm going to do this. You're saying to me, now hold on, Kathy, for heaven's sake, you've written RNA, RNA, RNA. Well, what's the difference? Let's see. Um, well, there's a gap here in the N. Your R has got a little bit of a gap. No, that's just my handwriting. The difference is that we have messenger RNA, and it's a little m. And RNA is in capitals. Then you have um, transfer RNA, and you have ribosomal RNA. Now, we don't really worry too much about the ribosomal RNA, but it sits in the ribosome and helps the coding of the whole process. So it's almost like the final stamping machine. Just give it stamp there and punt out the amino acids. All right. Your messenger RNA is your mRNA. So it is messenger now, people, what does a messenger normally do in life? A messenger takes information from one point to another. It's not that difficult. Okay, so we have mRNA would be messenger RNA. These are the RNAs that sort of are floating around. Remember, your RNA is all over. They are at the, the uh, uh, nucleolus, and they are in and around the cytoplasm, and in the, the nucleoplasm, uh, except that they're all over. They go where they want to. Okay? Your messenger RNA is going to take messages from, I'm going to put this in brackets, from the DNA, which forms the template to um, the ribosome. That's their job. They're going to take this message of the template, the information that's on the DNA, all the way to the ribosome. Why? Because that's where we make proteins. Now, please understand this. And if you don't, Facebook Indiana immediately. If you recall, in grade 11 and 10, you would have gone through your organic compounds. And you had proteins, and you had carbohydrates, and you had fats. And I t I've told you already that proteins are made up, make up all cells are made of protein and the organelles. So all cells, all your hormones except the sex hormones are made purely of fat. But all your other hormones contain proteins. So cells, hormones, every antibody in your, in the, your entire being is made of protein. And all your enzymes are made of protein. That is why when temperatures are very high, you denature the proteins. And when temperatures are very low, you then end up making them too cold and they become inactive. Right, so that's what they base chronology on. You know when people die and they freeze their bodies for, to be woken up in 100 years' time when they've now found a cure for whatever killed them, like old Disney. You know Walt Disney who did all the Disney? Yeah. He had his body frozen at, through chronology, and he's lying in a capsule somewhere, waiting to be thawed one day with a cure for whatever he had. But uh, that's insane. These people have too much money. Sure, All right, so you've got your messenger RNA. Its job is to take the message from the DNA, which is your template. And these are all terms you need to know. From the templates in the DNA, to the ribosome. Why the ribosome? Because that's where protein is made. Okay, now, the protein in your body is unique. Now remember, people, it can't be very unique or most unique. Unique is unique. There's one of a kind, and that's you. 
There is no other human being that is exactly like you, except if you have a Siamese twin or an identical twin. Nobody else is the same. So, you produce very special proteins in your body. So, it would be the same as Indiana and I both have eyeballs. Okay, we've both got eyes. That you we see, do. we've got eyes. Okay, we have hair, we have nails, we have two fingers, a nose, and I mean, ten fingers and ten toes and a nose and a mouth. But look at her and look at me. We do not look the same. Okay, there is, we, if we were sisters, we may have, I mean, if you look at sisters or brothers or brothers and sisters, um, you look at them, you can see, well, we all have mom's nose or dad's nose or mom's crooked pinkies or whatever, but you are still completely unique as you are. The same with your proteins. That is why if anything happened to Indy and she now needed kid a kidney, for example, I would gladly give her one. But you know what? Her body's going to say, sorry, don't want that because it's not good enough. Why? Because it doesn't contain the same protein. All right, her body would see it as the same reaction as if she had a splinter in her hand. It would reject, reject, reject. That's why when do kidney donations and organ donations take place, they do such incredible tests to make sure that there is a, a, a very great similarity in the whole process. Now, we've got our messenger RNA because the ribosomes make the proteins, the proteins that are unique to your body. Then you've got the transfer RNA, and what the transfer RNA does is it gets this message from the ribosome uh, that the DNA, uh, that the messenger RNA is bringing from the DNA, and it says, okay, let me go fetch the bag. The bag being the amino acids. All right, now remember, to make a protein, you have to put the amino acids together, and it does all of this in little groups of three. So, I'm going to recap. Messenger RNA. And what does messenger RNA do? It takes information from the DNA template and it takes it to the ribosome. So it goes through the nuclear pore to the ribosome. Why? Because we want to make a very, very specific protein. And that recipe is on the template of the DNA. That's where the recipe is. Because remember, each person is special. Then, Transfer RNA says, okay, transfer RNA's job is to understand what the ribosome information the ribosome's getting from the messenger RNA, and it then goes and fetches its little amino acid, very specific amino acid, to match what the order is. And then we have our ribosomal RNA, which actually puts the whole lot together so that the ribosome can put out the specific protein Part or piece of protein. Okay, so it's all, um, if you thought of it as a takeaway joint, okay, you are the DNA, you phone in your order, okay, the person answering the phone takes your message of what you are ordering, they will then go to the kitchen, which is the ribosome, all right, and in the kitchen, the transfer RNA will go, those, those are the guys that do all the cooking, they will go and get, a, a, you want a hamburger? Well, they will go and get the meat patty and the, the rolls and the lettuce and the tomato and whatever else it is that you've ordered. And it, it, they're all there. And then you get your master chef who comes along, your ribosomal RNA, and says, cool. Oops. And the food will then go, your hamburger will then go out of the ribosome, the restaurant. You follow all the takeaway places. Yeah. And that literally is what all of this does. As long as you remember, A equals T and G equals C. So you're always going to have these complementary bases with each other, always. Okay, so now, those are your types of RNA, messenger RNA, transfer RNA, which basically finds the correct amino acid, okay, why? So that the ribosomal RNA can put it all together 
to form the protein which is then released by the ribosome. Okay, now. Kathy, before, mm -hmm. before we go on, I just want to ask you a quick question. I think somebody wanted to know what, they don't quite understand what a template is. A template? Yes. Um, Let's see who asked that question. Where is, where okay. is this? Okay, hold on, hold on. Hold Reba. On. Reba wants, she doesn't Reba, understand. Reba, a template. A template would be, um, okay, look, I'm assuming you are, if you're in a trick, you're 18, 17, 18, 19 years old. Cast your mind back to nursery school. And in nursery school, one of the favorite activities, if you are anything like my children were, was potato painting. And you would, the teachers would give you a potato, and they would, you would get a shape on the potato, and you would then cut out the shape you wanted, and you would then stamp those X's or circles or triangles or pictures and make pictures out of your potato with paint on it. That little moldy thing that stuck out on the stamp that you created was the template. So that every single stamp was identical. That's a template. That's an amazing answer. That's really good. Cool. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Thanks, Kathy. Do you understand it? I understand it. it. Cool. You know when okay. I get excited, I, then you know I understand. People, <laughs> I've just brought this slide up. I asked John to put on a table of the RNA and DNA differences. First one, and you know all of these because we've done them, okay, is that your RNA has a ribose pentose sugar, whereas DNA has a deoxyribose pentose sugar. Remember, pentose sugar is a 5 carbon sugar, so they both have this structure. This is a deoxy, and this is just ribose. Okay, RNA is always a single unwound strand. I mean, what's it going to wind with? So it's single, whereas your DNA is a double, and helix means that it is twisted. I hope you can see the bright yellow. Okay, the strand in RNA is short. Why? Because you only ever have three bases. Okay, there are three, three little bits of information. All right, those three little bits of information are going to be a combination of three nucleotides. All right, always in threes. Remember, three is a lucky number. So we call it a code on. Because what happens is your messenger RNA will go and it will code on to the information that the DNA has as a template. And it codes that, that information. So it writes down the message. It then takes that information to the ribosome. All right, that is co a code on. But you could also call it... Um, a, a, a triplet base. But you can't just call it a triplet. So you either call it a codon and a triplet base, or when we look at um, your, your transfer RNA, with a transfer RNA, you have the opposite, which would be an anticodon. Here your strands are long. I mean, think of how long your DNA is. And I'm just going to change color here. Just think about how long your DNA strands are. It wraps around every single chromosome. People, use your common sense. Don't learn your, 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 your work in a little block. Think. You know, it's not outlandish. Think. All right. And then it contains uracil, whereas DNA will always contain thymine as the pyrimidine of the complementary bases. Alrighty. Now, having gone through that, blah, blah, blah. Have, Vuyo has given me a question. about It's about thymine. When the RNA single strand bonds with DNA during DNA replication, does the uracil in RNA change to thymine? Yes. There and it changes to thymine as soon as that hydrogen bond forms. Okay. So because you don't have any uracil on a DNA strand, on a DNA, ever. All right, so you'll have your DNA, and if there are any uh, pyrimidines that are not cytosine, it is going to be thymine. All right, 
um, if the RNA comes in to, during replication, at any time, you are going to find it is uracil and not thymine. And that is how people, I told you this last week, but in case you weren't watching, that is how you know if what you are looking at in your question is on RNA or if it refers to DNA. All right, even if you're looking at one strand of DNA, you will always have thymine. You will never, ever have uracil on DNA. Right. I've got a question. I don't know if it's off base, but I, I thought it was quite um, interesting and I want to know about it. Um, Auntie Ritze wants to know, um, can you give an argument on which DNA fingerprinting evidence can be rejected? Can I give? Um, an example or an argument of when DNA fingerprint evidence can be rejected. Well, it's many reasons, but so I mean, one of them would be if the evidence was tampered with. Another one could be if um, the victim had sexual intercourse with a person that was consensual, and she then later gets raped, and the guy uses a condom, and they then find that DNA. So there, there are a whole bunch of circumstances. You know, it's like saying if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it is a duck. Actually not. It could be a five-year-old with flippers on and playing with a, with a, a, exactly. a, a bath ducky. You've, you, you have to remember that when they come with convictions and they're doing mm -hmm. fingerprinting, DNA fingerprinting, although all our CSI programs, and they are wonderful, I mean, oh, how I they it. actually love figure it. things out the way they <laughs> do it in Vienna, it is such nonsense. I mean, all of a Don't sudden, lie. when, bam, you know, Don't let's not worry about me, Kathy. It's, it's all of a sudden, there's, there is a hair in this entire hall, <laughs> they will find the one, I mean, it, it, people take it all with a pinch of salt. The same with those law programs. That is not what being an attorney is all about. My daughter will tell you firsthand because she's now a qualified attorney, or rather she's in her last year of doing her articles, almost there. But she says, I watch these programs, Mom, and this is what made me want to be an attorney one day, and, and <laughs> wow, it's so, so far away from the truth. Okay, so be careful of that kind of thing, but your DNA fingerprinting, they have to make sure that there are at least eight to 10 common points in, in the DNA uh, uh, um, structures and the markers, that's number one. And number two, where did the evidence come from? How was the evidence collected? You know that most of the people, by the way, Indy, this is just as a snippet of useless information, you know, I love them. is that you end up with most of your court, most of your cases against people, like your bad guys, mm -hmm. gets thrown out because there's insufficient evidence or the evidence hasn't been collected in the proper way. Yeah. You know, we have to look after people's rights, but by the same token, we also have to make sure that we don't mess up, especially if you choose that kind of forensic uh, pathologist or, or any career in forensics, it is incredibly interesting and you'll find that the police services pretty much pay for your entire study. So there's something to look at Ooh. for a bursary for when you leave school. I wouldn't mind it going is, to forensics. I think it, would, it is so interesting. It's amazingly stimulating. Not one day is the same as the next. So people, there's a career to think about. Um, because we all think about doctors, becoming doctors and attorneys, and doctors and engineers, and engineers and, and, engineers and doctors yeah. and attorneys. Hello, there's a lot more out there. And there's one, forensic pathology. All right, let's just get back here. What we've got here is a, 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 a protein synthesis structure. What I wanted to show you here is that you have your nucleus. This is your nuclear membrane, and I'm going to give it a a little bit of a color here. There's your nuclear membrane, and in between the nuclear membrane, you have a pore. And this is where the little messenger RNA is going to move out. Now, remember, your, your um, takeaway joint is your ribosome. Okay? That's where the hamburger is going to get made. Or in this case, the amino acids are going to be put together to form pieces of proteins. Remember, your amino acids group together to form polypeptides, and the polypeptides form proteins. Proteins are huge molecules. So we're now making little amino acids at a time. So we're saying, right, now, how are we going to do this? The information comes from our DNA. So here we have our DNA strand. And it's this DNA strand 
that now gives us the information. It provides the template. In other words, the information. The messenger RNA comes along and it codes on. Now, codes on is what makes it, and this is why we call it a code on. And that's why I prefer code on to a triplet base. All right, so it codes on. This messenger RNA codes on. It takes the information from the DNA, okay, as a complementary base set, and that's what we call transcription. Um, I want to, uh, I just want to get myself a, yeah, that smart an, a, 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 yeah, a blank screen. All right, now watch here, okay? If my DNA strand, and please, if you understand this, you're A for away. The DNA strand, okay, remember they're going to open. So your, your, your hydrogen bonds are going to break, an enzyme causes that to happen. And those hydrogen bonds go ploops. Now the information on the DNA strand is there to get. All right, so there's the DNA strand. So now we're going to make a DNA strand. So let's do that. Okay? And remember, you're going to have your phosphate backbone and your pinto sugar and attached to your pentose sugar, which is your deoxyribose sugar, you are going to find a set of, of, of letters. Now, between A, T, G, and C, you tell me what I'm going to put here. Well, anything. A, a, T, a, T G, or C. T. T. G. And G. And another G. Uh -huh. And then an A. Okay. To go. All right. So, Indy's given us our letters. This would be what is on that DNA strand, all right? Along comes RNA. And here's my RNA. Which RNA? Our messenger RNA. And messenger RNA goes, whoops, into the nucleus. It goes to the DNA, and it says, okay, hold on. And it does this. So I'm going to have, what is the complementary base to... T, got people, remember, A to T and G to C. So, if there's a T on the DNA strand, what is the complementary base? It is going to be A. And the complementary base for G would be C. And for G, you know what, I'm going to swap this around here, Indy, because I actually want to show the learners That's a okay. specific That's thing. Okay. So, let's make this A. And make that one there G. All right. So what we're going to have is our messenger RNA is going to come and it's going to say complementary to T, complementary to G, and complementary to A is not thymine. It's going to be uracil if it is RNA. So uracil will clock in here. Okay, this has three nuclear uh, nucle uh, 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 bases. All right? It's got three little bases. Three means it is a triplet base, or we call it, we say that it codes on, so it is, becomes a code on. This little group here of three is a type of messenger RNA, and it's called a code on. The code on gets its information from the DNA template. All right? Now, that's going to tell it to make a specific amino acid. So it says, all right, got it, got it. Now, the messenger RNA scoots out of here, and off it goes through the nuclear plasm and the nuclear pore. All right? And I have forgotten we are ACU. And here comes A, C, U. Right? So it's literally come from there and it slips out so that we have our ACU there. This is my messenger RNA.
A. Now, where does it go to? It goes to our takeaway place, which is going to be the ribosome. So it gets to the ribosome, okay, and we now have the opposite to what we had on the DNA. Okay, you understand that? It's the complementary base on the DNA. It goes to the ribosome, and when it gets to the ribosome, you see A, all right? And everybody's very, very happy here. We're going to have on this side transfer RNA is going to come along and say, all right, let's match up here. And what does it do? It is the anticodon of what was on the DNA. Yay, anticodons! Yes. So your codon people was the, the messenger RNA taking a, the, a, a sort of almost a picture of the opposite or complementary base of the DNA template. You know what, okay. Cassie? That's your code on. The opposite is going to be your transfer RNA, which is the anti code on. It is the opposite of the messenger RNA. Do you know what I think we should do? It's mm. just an idea. I think we should go to break because when we get back, I've actually got um, a mindset on the page that has been really, really struggling between the difference between codons and anti codons. Okay. Yeah. So guys, Stick to your seats, we'll be back in two seconds, see you now. Hi guys, we are back and we are talking about um, codons and anticodons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very exciting and Kathy can't wait to get on it. So, let's get straight to it. Okay, people, remember, it, it, I'm, I'm trying to think of an, a different analogy to use here, but your messenger RNA, when it takes... When, when it goes to or at the DNA and it makes this copy of the opposite process of what is on the DNA, we say that it is a code on. All right. So your messenger RNA codes on the little piece of three, the information that you're going to find on the DNA. All right. This process, and I'm going to use a different color here, is called transcription. And you must know what transcription is. So transcription is when the messenger RNA comes along, groups together as three bases that are complementary, the code on. This little thing is a code on. And it then is the opposite or complementary base to the information that is on the DNA strand, which is the template. Now this, forming the opposite information, the codon, of the DNA information is called transcription. Okay, then we move down. And the little messenger RNA goes biddy, 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 biddy out through the nuclear pore. And there's my messenger RNA code on. All right. It's a code on because it's a little group of three very specific uh, uh, messenger RNAs that have been put together, or little RNAs that have been put together. They're very specific. It has coded onto what is in the DNA. And it is the opposite, it's the complementary base. That's transcription. Now, the messenger RNA code on, which is this little specific group of three, comes to the ribosome. And at the ribosome, it says, okay, here I am. That's the message I have from the DNA. But the transfer RNA says, wait, wait, I have to do the opposite to what you've got here. Why? Because it needs to look like the DNA. So it says, okay, I'm going to do the opposite. If something is anti, it is opposite. Okay? If um, you like chocolate cake and I am anti chocolate cake, it means I don't like it, which is a lie, I love it. But do, do, do you know that? So anything anti, so if the codon is ACU, 
What is the anticodon going to be? The anticodon is going to be the opposite to what I have on the codon, the messenger RNA codon, which is going to be, what's the opposite to A? And if you can't remember, A equals T or U, and G equals C. Okay? So, how do we look at it? We say, right, A to T, it can't be T because, hello, it's RNA, so it must be U. And C opposite is G, and the complementary base to uracil is going to be adenosine. All right, now, what do we have? U, U, G, A, if we go back and look at our T, G, A. So remember, RNA will always have a U instead of a T. So there we had the, the anticodon on the transfer RNA um, okay, was U, G, A. Is it the same as the DNA? Yes. Remember that on the DNA we're going to have thymine and on the RNA we have uracil. An easy way to do it is this, people. Let me just get a... I want a blank screen. Okay, look here. This is what you do. Piece of cake. Let's get my white and say, right. We're going to have three columns. Okay? And here we have the DNA, which is going to be the template. So that's the information on the DNA strand. There's going to be one strand of, or just put here, one strand of DNA. So this is either the left strand, the right strand, the first strand, the second strand, whichever. Okay? Here we are going to have the messenger RNA. And this is going to be the code on, or it's going to produce the code on. And remember, the code on is the little group of three bases that are part of the messenger RNA. Then, in pink, all right, nice contrast, we're going to have the, boy, that's not working, the transfer RNA. And please take note, messenger and transfer is written in little letters. All right, they lowercase, okay? And your transfer RNA is the anti-code on. It is the opposite to codon. Now watch here, okay? The DNA, uh, what did we have? We had TGA, huh? mm. So we've got, there's my, my DNA strand, and a portion of this DNA strand, we are going to have TGA. Okay? TGA, the messenger RNA comes along, it forms the anticodon, and it says, okay, 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 just those three little pieces, let's just make this a little bit shorter, um, okay, wait, let's just do this again, um, it only works for those three because it is a codon or triplet base. Okay, codon or triplet base. It's this little piece of RNA. And it comes along and says, right, complementary of, U, of T would be A. Complementary of G is always C. Complementary of A is thymine, uh, but it's RNA, so therefore, what are we going to have? Uracil. Okay, that's my codon. Anticodon is opposite. So what am I going to have? I'm going to have here, my, my transfer RNA is going to have, instead of A, it's going to have T. Instead of C, it's going to have G. And instead of U, I, I, I mean, for the U, it's going to have A. But, sorry, 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 it's going to have a U. Let's just get my white here. Fix that line up. All right, watch here now. Um, 
Okay, you're going to have to just squish it in here. I'm going to use the yellow. Watch here. The DNA and the codon of the messenger RNA is opposite. So the codon is the opposite to what the information is on the DNA strand. It's opposite. And the anticodon and the codon, so the difference in the messenger RNA and the transfer RNA, it is opposite. But now, in being opposite, you've had opposite twice, which makes what is on the anticodon the same as what is on the DNA, except that because this is RNA, it is going to have uracil instead of the thymine. But the information is identical. So if you get any question where they say to you, here are the different amino acids, and this is how they blah, 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 you say, okay, fine, not a problem. If they give you the amino acid, the amino acid uh, uh, um, sequence will be your anticodon. So you immediately know it's from your transfer RNA, it's an anticodon. It will be the same as your DNA, except you'll have uracil there and thymine if it's DNA. That's how you know if it's DNA or RNA. DNA has thymine, RNA has uracil. And your codon and your anticodon are opposite. And your codon or your messenger RNA codon and your DNA are opposite. And if you can remember that, then you A for away. Because what happens now is that this messenger, I mean transfer RNA, the tRNA, of UGA, this is this little thing here. This is the anticodon. And the anticodon is always carried by the messenger, the transfer RNA. That anticodon, somewhere there are, there is an amino acid That is going to be U, G, A. All right? It then picks up that U, G, A, and it brings that U, G, A, which is your anticodon here, to the ribosome where the little amino acid is out through the ribosome. All the little amino acids are gathered together, and they then end up forming a protein. All right, you have all your little peptide bonds, and we have this huge protein that develops through polymerization. Okay, a polymer means lots of parts to a big molecule. Rization to make, polymerization. Okay, now, I just want to go back here to... Um, 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 yeah. Um, okay, watch here. And I don't think many of you will see this. Okay? And this is so clever. It's like coding. Um, what you've got is your first letter of, of the code on or triplet base. Whatever the triplet base is. The three little bases. You've got the first letter of the base, the second letter of the base across the top, and down the side here you've got the rest, which is your third letter. All right, so watch the combinations here. My first letter is either U, or C, or A, or G. My second letter can only ever be U, or C, or A, or G. All right? And my third letter is either U, C, A, G, or U, C, A, G, or U, C, A, G for each of them. Now, the words you see written here are all the amino acids. There are only 20 known amino acids. Us wonderful, intelligent human beings have only ever found 20 different amino acids known to man. So there are only 20 combinations needed of your four nitrogenous bases here, 
Your four nitrogenous bases is the second part. Because remember, instead of saying letter, the letter is actually um, the code. So whether it is the code on that you are going to find the opposite of this for your messenger RNA, or the actual anticodon, which is your transfer RNA information here, because what's on that transfer RNA, that anticodon, is what makes the amino acid. So, have a look here. If we have first letter is U, second one is U, and the first one here is U, so I've got three U's in a row, I'm going to have or UUC, that combination, I'm going to have phenylalanine. A nice one that they like is leucine. It's one that they can sometimes ask. They love valine. They love alanine. It doesn't mean you must go and sit and learn these things off by heart. They'll give you a table and say valine is your amino acid that's going to be made. All right? And your, your valine is made up of the following triplet bases. It's made up of um, GUU or GUC or GUA. They'll pick one of them. And let's say they say GUU. Then you know what was on your, what was on the DNA template. If it was GUU, it is going to be GTT. Okay? For valine. Your anticodon, um, I mean your codon, which is carried by your, at least, sorry, uh, your messenger RNA, okay, that codon's carried by your messenger RNA is going to be the opposite, people, and the opposite to G is going to be C, the opposite to T is A, and the opposite to T is A. And then we end up going to the anti-codon, which is carried by the transfer RNA, all right? And what am I going to have? I'm going to have the opposite to the codon, which is going to be opposite to C is G. Opposite to A, hold on, remember it's RNA, so there can't be thymine, it's got to be uracil, uracil. Now look here, G-U-U, there we go, and you will pick that it's valine. And it's as simple as that. There is nothing complicated as long as, um, uh, where are my, where did I do my table? You know what, while, yeah. you, while you look for your table, I know, I know, you, I know you can listen and look. Um, Neveron Phoenix, Felix. Neviron Felix has something great. I don't know what mm -hmm. you think of this. Um, if this helps anyone, he says, it's easy to remember that RNA does not drink tea. That's how I remember that there is no tea in Thymine RNA. Thymine and uracil. Perfect. Beautiful. Mm. Okay. Um, Neviron. Oh, there we go. It's fantastic. So RNA doesn't drink tea. It drinks uracil. And that's the best way to remember it. People, if you see any combination, any triplet basis, in other words, three little bases together, all right? All you have to do to determine if it's RNA or DNA is you turn around and you say, okay, does, is there a uracil? There's a uracil or a thymine. The thymine means it's DNA, and the uracil means it's RNA. Okay, that's number one. Number two, we've got two very important definitions that you must know, or terms you must know. One is transcription, and one is translation. Now, two scribe, which is where transcription comes from, to scribe means to write. Trans means to move. So you're basically moving the writing. That's what transcription is. Or you're copying it. You're transcribing. You are copying it. Okay, but the opposite. So that's transcription. Transcription is when your messenger RNA code on, all right, forms complementary bases and codes to the template of the DNA. All right, so transcription is the process whereby, sounds very complicated, eh? But transcription is the process 
whereby your messenger RNA codes on to the template of the DNA. And a codon has three triplet bases. All right, so now we've coded on, and it is the complementary bases. Okay, they are opposite. They are the complementary bases on the code on to the DNA template. So we now have the opposite. Okay, fancy word for opposite, saying it is the complementary base set. All right, now my umbilical cord that I'm moving along, okay, we look at the anticodon. So now the messenger RNA goes zoops, and it goes all the way to the RNA, because that's where protein synthesis is. Okay, the grade tens learned today that the, R that, that the ribosome is the, is the site for protein synthesis. This is why. Okay, now, the anticodon is opposite. It is anti. It is opposite to the codon. It is the complementary to what is on the codon. So, instead of A, complementary would be U, because remember, RNA doesn't drink T. C to G, U to A. And what do we have here? We've got the anticodon for the amino acid. And the information when it is anticoded, and it's coded like that, and we end up with the amino acid, we call the reading of the transfer RNA of the mRNA, creating the complementary bases, we say that that is trans. Relation. So your transfer RNA is translating the information on the codon, right, but as an opposite complementary base. So we have transcription, the messenger RNA forms a complementary basis to the information on the DNA, okay, and anticodon is when that message is translated and formed into an amino acid. So at the end of the day, what are we translating? We're translating the information from the DNA strand to make here, to make an amino acid. Amino acid passes out, and what do we end up with? A whole bunch of amino acids, peptide bonds, and we have a protein. People, that's protein synthesis in a nutshell. A Adenosine, to thymine, okay, or uracil in the case of RNA, and guanine to cytosine. All ways. And if it has a U in it, so a, a nitrogenous base that's uracil, you know it's RNA. And your transfer messenger RNA is opposite. It's the anticodon is your transfer RNA. So messenger RNA codes on. Three little triplet bases, your anticodon is your transfer RNA, and that is then translated into a specific amino acid. And if you remember this, 100% in any question you get on protein synthesis, and I think it's going to be your essay at the end of the year. There you go. Okay, Kathy, I cannot believe, guys. Grade 12s, I know you guys have been with us. We've been standing and chatting to you for the last three hours. Now, if that is not a marathon show, it's like extreme live show, learn it's extra like live. Fun, hey? it's, it's such fun. fun. And we've enjoyed every single minute of it. Grade 12s, don't forget that tomorrow is also maths literacy. Last week, maths literacy, I was waiting for all of the grade 10s, 11s, and, and 12s. Like, la la la. Guys, please join us tomorrow. And don't forget to join us again for Life Sciences next week. I know that you guys love it. And guys, help each other out on the page. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. You totally can. There's no rule saying you can't help anyone out on the page. Please do. You guys are all doing it already. Um, and thanks, Kathy. It was Pleasure a great darling. lesson. Loved it. Yeah. Loved it. Fantastic. Anytime. Anytime. Yeah. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Great. They, they must go on to learn extra. Okay. They, they, go on they, to learn extra. www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra. The most amazing summaries ever because I did them.
Okay. They're there. They helped a lot of matriculants last year. I'll, I'll post them up onto the website. Okay. Thanks, guys. Cheers, bye. Bye. bye.